We love the king, don't we? Oh, Charlie, King Charles III. We love the king, don't we? Because after all, he is that kind and benevolent king that's very nice to animals. He was very keen on um, organic, wasn't it? Organic farming. I think Sir Julian Rose actually taught him all about organic farming, showed him how to nurture plants. And I believe the king, when he was prince, prince of Wales, he was very much into that, wasn't he? He was, he was there looking after plants and pushing forward. I think he's, he even got his own little sort of brand going that you can go and buy in some of the upmarket supermarkets. Uh, the brand of um, biscuits, I think, was one. And, and the oats and the barley and all those things were grown in an organic way as far as I remember I don't really I didn't I you know I, I never really took to him as the prince there was something a bit strange about him maybe it was to do with his his wife that uh, accidentally died uh, it may may not have been quite like that but anyway however uh, he there was something funny about him and anyway uh, roll forward and he's the king and one of the first uh, things that he does once he becomes king was to set forward into motion the Precision Breeding Act. You know, the act that is there that means that you can have GM crops and manipulate manipulate the, geo, the genome of plants, uh, which is as far as uh, organic farming as you can get. But not only plants, it seems that you can have precision breeding and muck about with the genome of, of other things, animals. And, and it was listed as animals and... And maybe even humans, maybe even humans are part of that animal kingdom. I, I don't know, because the way that things are going, that we've had these um, medical interventions that have caused all sorts of stuff, and people claim, of course, that it's affecting the DNA, and that must obviously affect your, your genomes in there and, and change your personality. I don't know, but is it safe? Is it safe eating genetically modified foods? I'm not sure that it is. Uh, and even if it is safe, shouldn't we have the shouldn't we have the choice to do that? I mean, I I know that they say in the supermarkets there is organic farming and and they have certain organic uh, organic products and they're extremely expensive. Of course, they're far far more expensive. They do less with those to grow them than they do with all the sprays and and all the pesticides and fungicides and all of the herbicides all of the stuff that they put in plus all the other bits and bobs they do to the highly processed foods that you get in the supermarket of course and yet organic farming is it seems to me using nature to help you grow sufficient crops that would be useful and health beneficial. You know, you've got to get the you've got to get the soil. You've got to get the soil up and running and not full of all this uh, um, bad stuff, which is leaching into the water table. Of course. Anyway, apart from all that, and and I remember, didn't I remember that the king? I think before he became king, he promised. Didn't he not promise that, of course, he had all these commitments, commitments to the WEF, you know, the World Economic Forum. I, I believe he was there with the uh, pair of scissors and the ribbon, launching it and gave a, a speech. But he said, did he not, did he not say, uh, when I'm king, I've got to be responsible now. Uh, I've got to toe the line because I am actually a, a sovereign king for the people of this land. I'm here to make sure that the government doesn't get out of control uh, and so that, of course, when I give the royal assent, it is really to, to make sure that my subjects, the people of this land, will be looked after and cared for in the best possible way. Not the best possible way for him and his mates at the WEF and the WHO with their medical interventions and their syringes of hope. No, not, not that sort of best possible way, the best possible way for us. He is supposedly supposed to be our man to arbitrarily make sure that uh, there is no shenanigans going on in Parliament, that actually the House of Commons, the the uh, the corporation that is in charge, that uh, somehow they've managed to usurp what was an assembly of people who we had elected now that we, we are voting in their selection of dubious people. And it seems that somehow or other, 
they are now dictating to us what we will have. Things that nobody has asked for. And the weird thing is, I mean, I go around the country now talking to people and giving talks, and I ask them, uh, by the way, just so I know, so that I don't get this, so I'm not giving misinformation, could I just ask in the room... Who, who actually asked for the digital IDs or the central bank digital currency? Who's actually asked for this suicide policy of net zero where we, we get rid of everything uh, to do with carbon emission? I mean, carbon, you know, the, the thing that is the gas of life. Uh, who's actually asked for any of this? Who's asked for the ULES, for example, and the, the surveillance uh, and painting our skies with uh, all this dreadful nanotechnology and the graphene that's sprinkling down and making us ill um, and all of that? Who asked for any of that? And do you know, funnily enough, not one person in the room, not one person puts their hand up and says, I, I actually... I wanted to make sure that there was highly processed foods in the supermarket and that we don't do anything about it. I wanted to have the precision breeding. You know, Nobody's actually asked for any of this stuff, which is strange that the government, who are supposed to be our servants, seem to think that they are our masters. Isn't that odd? I mean, it seems odd to me. Uh, we pay for them, don't we? And yet they just laugh at us, have their parties. Meanwhile, everybody else is staying away from funerals or not going to weddings and staying in their house. You know, that period when we were all told we couldn't... We all obeyed, didn't we? Not that we would do that ever again, because we've seen them in the light that they are. We realise, of course, that Parliament means uh, people who lie. They're talking lies. So, really, we don't need... As sovereign individuals ourselves... We don't need to know anything about it. Well, anyway, the whole point was the king was supposed to be the uh, the arbiter of making sure that we were looked after and he was not supposed to get involved in all the political stuff. Hmm. It's funny, though, because I was sent this article. Uh, king Charles to attend COP28. Uh, this is that whole global warming nonsense. They've had 28 times to sort of work out what they should do they still can't make up their mind. Let's just have a quick look at this article. There he is. Look, there he is, um, listening and uh, n not taking any advice whatsoever because he knows what he wants to do. He wants to carry on with the political stuff that he's decided he will do. King Charles III will attend, it says here, COP28 Climate Summit in Dubai next month. And Buckingham Palace have confirmed that. The king, a long-standing advocate of bolder action to combat climate change, although, of course, he's not supposed to be getting involved in any of the politics, is he, as the king? However, uh, let's have a look, see what it says. Uh, he will deliver the opening address at the World Climate Action Summit, the gathering of the global leaders, which will open the two-week annual conference. These uh, global leaders, you know, the Rishi Sunaks and all the rest, uh, and many of the other unelected, uh, unaccountable people who are calling themselves our leaders and making decisions and telling us how we are going to live, uh, l most likely going to be there, aren't they? Um, the, it, it got here, this is a bit of a misprint here, K, what's that, I don't know, having placed a major diplomatic role as the Prince of Wales in the UK and hosted COP26 in 21, although, of course, um, he wasn't supposed to be uh, telling us any of this stuff as king, he was supposed to have bowed out. There was confusion last year whether he would attend COP27 in Egypt. Downing Street eventually confirmed that he would not, uh, because it was not the right occasion and what does that mean? What is the, it once he's the king, it's not the right occasion. This year, apparently, the king will attend at the invitation of the, uh, a, the UAE president. Um, and he will go on behalf of the, uh, the request of the UK government. Well, what is the government requesting the king to go there? He is supposed to be out of it now. He's not supposed to have anything to do with the political side of things. So in a way, you might think of this as treason. Because he is being treasonous against the people that he's supposed to be the representative of. Which, 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 if he is treason, to me, that's the last straw. It's like when 
when GB News decided they would um, they would hire Boris Johnson to be one of their presenting team. It's like, well, the mask has finally slipped. Who watches GB News now? We know that they're not the people's channel. We know that they are controlled opposition and that they are shills and trying to sort of, again, carry out what the government really wants or, or what the people who are outlaying the money behind all of that want. And that actually... There is no voice on mainstream media whatsoever who represents the true um, nature of the people and what the people want and, and will not actually give a balanced view to any of this. So finally, that mask has slipped. And this seems to me now the king, has his, his mask has well and truly slipped here. Uh, I mean, not only is he managing to give the royal assent to the energy bill, you know, the supposed right legally that people can come in and kick your door down and say you've got to have a smart meter, uh, unless, of course, you uh, say to them, look, I don't give you jurisdiction. I don't consent to this. It's I'm out of your system. Uh, then, of course, they're in a bit of trouble. It's only it, they have to get jurisdiction to get you to agree, to understand that you are this legal fiction on a bit of paper that they think that you are. Uh, and if you are not, if you don't give them jurisdiction, then hard, tough cheese, you know, you're living in the private, your castle is your home, your home is your castle, whichever way around you want to put it. And uh, they can get stuffed, especially if you put up some uh, no trespassing on signs on the boundary of your property. Anyway, the main point of all of this is to say, in my opinion, the king has caused... Is, is, this is treasonous. And so, therefore, I want nothing to do with the king. I'm not his subject, thank you very much. He's not my king. I'm living in the private. I'm not in their system. They can all go to hell and do their thing wherever they want, but I'm not part of it. This king is not for me and doesn't represent me. And who gave him the power anyway, to be above anybody else other than those people, you know, the Normans who came in in 1066 with a bunch of sticks and beat some other people up and then said, you know what, we claim it. And, and as a descendant of all of that corruption and fraud, he sort of claims, well, I'm going to be the king. And, and he can do as much pomp and circumstance as he jolly well likes with gold and, and things and the whole sort of laurel leaf from the, the Vatican and the Roman and all of this and the Luciferians and all the sort of private Bargill oaths and all of this and the City of London and all of that. He can do all of that, but he doesn't represent for me the real sovereign people of this land, which is, of course, you and me, the living, breathing men and women of this land. He doesn't represent that. And he can go and have a waffle and chat at COP28 as far as I... Obviously, they can't manage to get make their mind up what they should be or shouldn't be doing. So he doesn't represent me. He's, it's, it's all a bunch of rubbish. It's all theatre. And we just have to say, no, thank you. Not for us. Goodbye. You're nothing to do with us anymore.